Welcome back to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life with Laurel and Laurel. Well, I hope that everyone who's listening at the beginning of this podcast today stays the whole time, no matter how old you are, no matter where you are on this topic today, because we need women to be advocates for other women on this subject in a big way. Our topic today is embracing aging versus resisting aging. And I love speaking into this, Laurel. I am so glad you're here with me today and that we're going to speak into this topic because we cannot talk about it enough openly and honestly in the world today. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. I, um, I want to begin with, I really, I really encourage any young listener to stay with us today. Um, I think if you're older, obviously we're going to have a lot of great rich content for you, but for the young listeners that might be beginning with us and wondering what's in it for me today, there's a lot in it for you. And I'm going to say that I'll tell you a little bit from my own personal story and professional story. Um, I did my mental health counseling a lot in my forties. And I worked with a lot of women from all ages, from young ages to older ages. And the the cultural habits around how critical we are around our body image, around how we see ourselves, around aging, around our looks is so unfortunate, the conditioning and the ways that we've been imprinted by so much information that teaches us we're not okay just the way that we are. And so there's a lot of work to do here. And if you have daughters or you have sisters or you have, um, you know, any young people in your, in your life, you can become an influencer and help them do the healing that is really needed in the world today. So I hope I didn't sound too preachy there, Laurel, but I, no. I really feel strongly about this topic, as you can tell. <laughs> and I, you know, it's so interesting. I know it's going to come out, but I think we have different perspectives. And I'm going to say this because I think that women resist aging or, or changing at several stages in our lives, not just when we're our age, That's right. but um, it made me think about, um, and this will just be a quick tangent, but you know, when my nieces who are now, I think 36 and 40, when they were young girls, my sister and I used to go bowling once a week. We had a lot of children between us and it was a big night out, girls night out. They used to always wanted to go. And my sister said to them one day, you can come bowling. It's women's bowling night. You can come when you're women. They were young. Neither of them had started menstruating at the time, which they thought was disgusting and they didn't want to happen. Yeah. But the day that it did, my old my niece was like, now I can go bowling. I love it. I love it. And so when I think about, you know, when we resist change and growing, you know, it might be when we're young girls coming into womanhood. It could be you know, when we're, when we're young moms and we're resisting what happens in that motherhood stage, um, it could be, you know, any of the, I'll say threshold decade birthdays, it could be when you're 30, 40, 50. Um, I totally, oh no, I'm so with you on that topic. Yeah. And I think that we get groomed really early on to think that youth is the best thing ever. And in a lot of ways, it's just not. I mean, it, it wasn't for me. I found aging to be much more enjoyable than being a young person in the world. So I think that it's, you know, a lot of it has to do with what your own personal experience is. And then also, you know, what you want from life and how willing you are to to dig in and, and do this beautiful work that we're talking about. Mm. You really enjoy the experience of living at all ages and all stages of life, right? So to embrace aging right from the beginning means that, to me, it means that you're going to embrace the experience of becoming older and wiser, but you're also going to ex embrace the experience of the, the things that you lose along the way, because we are, there are losses along the way with aging at every stage, as well as the gains. Yeah. And we talk about that so in so many of our podcast topics, right? The episodes that we touch on, you know, how to how to 
move through stages of life without resistance, I think was one of them. Resistance, self-love, self-acceptance, all of those tie into embracing aging. Um, And it's so important to really, you know, even roles and responsibilities. When I think about my role and responsibility in my community, in my family, it has changed over the decades. And I'm really pleased that I get to be, you know, in the stage or phase of life I am now with my new role and responsibilities compared, not that any of them in the past were bad, but, you know, I think it's, for me, it's easy, easier to think about gracefully changing and growing and, you know, flowing through life, knowing that nothing is, no, no stage is supposed to be you know, indefinite, right? Yeah, yeah. Permanent. It's so beautiful to be able to, um, you know, mindfully move through these phases of life so that we can enjoy them and then release them and allow ourselves to move into the next phase. So, you know, when we talk about this embracing versus resisting, the embracing is, you know, learning how to, to really say, what's, what's next for me, you know, like inviting the fullness of what, what's next and, and not resisting, which I think is often built into kind of our cultural model right now, which is, you know, try to stay young and try to stay fit and get your face lifted and dye your hair and all the things that are, you know, make you stay looking young. Right. And so to me, there's a, there's, there's, if, if it's too ingrained in there, it does become a part of our resistance to, oh, this is bad. It's not good that I'm looking older. It's not, you know, like we get all these images that then become a, a part of our unconscious resisting of it all. And we, yeah. and then, and then we are struggling, you know, at some level and we're not enjoying it. And so the, the goal yeah. is to, to, to just become aware of this, whatever resistance is there for each of us, right? be able to look at yeah, it. And I think it, it made me think about when you were speaking about, you know, is it possible that we admire other women who have aged at, and we look at them differently than we look at ourselves? And so I think I've mentioned my grandmother in, in prior podcast episodes, but my grand, grandmother lived to be 99 mm-hmm. and she was a vibrant spry woman um who had a lot of wrinkles yeah yeah <laughs> and i just admired her so much for all the living she did yeah. yeah and you know and maybe there's more public figures that i can think of you know actresses that age gracefully and i admire um yeah, i think you know, so I, I think that's one of the things that i would encourage our listeners Find photos of women that you admire for their wisdom, their knowledge, their whatever their life experience could be Mother Teresa. I don't know who our listeners admire, but look at photos of those women and then try to bring that same admiration to yourself. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful suggestion. I, I also had a um, a woman in my family. It was my mother's aunt, Harriet, and she lived to be 102. And she was dating men in her 80s at the senior center and going and playing cards up until in her 90s. You know, I mean, she just she just loved life. And she you, it was written all over her, you know, and and um, and she aged gracefully. And you knew she was moving slowly and carefully and all those things. But it didn't matter. She still was just present to whatever was happening around her. And, and you could see that glow from the inside out. And I think that's, that's one of the things too, for me that I think I anchor into that makes me appreciate, um, you know, beautiful women who are aging gracefully and, and they don't have to be the standard classic beauty. It's the beauty from that inside where they're just alive and glowing because they're engaged in life and they're still living fully. And there's such a, you know, there's such a, a grace in that. And I think that's a huge distinction that aging gracefully doesn't mean, 
you know, not slowing down or not having ailments or not having wrinkles. It means, you know, I, I, uh, for me, accepting the stage that you're in and still finding the joy and beauty in that stage. Um, because, you know, there is, there are things that happen physically, emotionally to us as we age and, and the loss, as you mentioned, you know, moving out of one phase into another often comes with loss. Um, so those are tricky things. Yeah. Yeah. But it is possible. It is. It is. And I think it's really, to me, it's a work of, um, it's a work of revolution to stand up and stand in our aging body and to actually look in the mirror and, and see yourself and say, you're doing well, you, you look good, get out there and live, you know, like to be your own cheerleader, to be your own per advocate of, of aging, you know, and to welcome it and to encourage ourselves to, to live into life fully, you know, and, and to do the thing, which in general, we're not doing, which is like to look at ourselves and say, go, you go girl, you know, right. Yeah, you, you go, right? No matter how you look, like, look, I've lived 64 years and look in the mirror and go, wow, you know, like, look at all the richness of that, you know? And yeah, my stomach's not flat, but think of all the great meals I've eaten and all the, you know, great tables I've sat at and enjoyed food and wine with other people. And, you know, like, this is what we're using the body for, like, hopefully for all kinds of good things, you know, and enjoying our ability to move and live and breathe and eat and drink and all the good things. Right. Yeah. 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 I, um, I think it recently when in our Facebook group, when we had a post about daily gratitude, one of my daily gratitude practices is for my physical body. Um, and my body is not the same shape or size that it was, you know, even five years ago, um, never mind 25 years ago. And so, that is one of the things that has really helped me accept my body for the gift that it is, not because of its physical size or shape, but because of its function, right? I so appreciate the function of my body. Um, everything from, you know, my eyesight to the way that my feet feel on the ground, right? Um, that my knees and hips still bend um, and move. Um, and I appreciate that. And I think that has really changed you know, how I feel about my physical shape and size. And I think that helps with my accepting of aging that when I appreciate, you know, that this physicalness, this physical being that I am is here for a certain reason. That reason is not to be on the cover of a magazine, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you know, what reason am I here? I am here to be able to move and live physically. So that is, has helped me. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, I love the, um, the idea of thinking about our bodies, you know, for the function versus the shape and size and look mm -hmm. right and what we're able to do because of that you know even just thinking about us you know being here on the podcast right we have our voices to express ourselves and and all the stories now that we have to tell over the years that we've collected and and the things that we've learned you know by going to school and working with people and whatever all the other rich experiences we've, we've had right and um, how our body can be here now to just have this experience and, and be able to function in the way that it does and to appreciate that, you know, to remember to appreciate what, what still does function well and yeah. what is still here. Yeah. Right. And, and what we're capable of doing as we age, right. Whether it be physically or, or in relationships, right. We are capable of doing so much and sharing so much because we have lived to the extent that we have yeah. for the decades we have. <laughs> and, and I think that uh, it's another one of those kind of cultural, overall cult cultural resistances that, you know, I hear a lot too, you know, um, from people, they don't like change. They don't want change. They want things to stay the same. And I think 
that pattern of resistance or that pattern, that desire to not have change is again, one of those things that affects us. And so when we look in the mirror, we think we're supposed to look the same as we did or, or look the same as we might not feel different. So we're supposed to look, you know, like we did 10 years ago, even though we, we aren't 10 years the same, right? Uh, 10 years have gone by. The body is a material object. It's aging. It's doing things. And so, you know, to re remember that so that we can replace that sense of things are supposed to change. That's not the natural order to stay the same. The natural order is to, right, the cycle of life, to grow, expand, decline, grow, expand, decline, right? And, and go again and again and again. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we the years pass to embrace that rather than thinking it's supposed to be the same because, mm -hmm. and when we look in the mirror, this it's a surprise. Well, it's only a surprise because your mind is telling you one thing and it's not the truth. It's not supposed to stay the same, right? Yeah. It is, it's supposed to change, yeah. And you know, it is interesting because when I think about, you know, when we started our conversation today and thinking that perhaps, you know, listeners who were younger may not under, may not need some of this conversation, but I think we just touched on something. The younger that you are, for those listeners that may be young, um, the younger that you are, when you learn to shift the, what you're thinking about your body appreciate the function um, or shift what I'm going to say the external approval, right? That is the hard work that we talked about a lot. You know, how can we judge ourselves and love ourselves from internal, um, internal acceptance criteria mm -hmm. rather than external. And so the, the more we focus on external, we may really suffer and hold on to our youth. But if we can come from a place of internal and understand our gifts, our talents, our roles and responsibilities, our place in the world, right, and our function, it may be easier to accept aging. Yeah, so beautifully said. And such a testament to, you know, why we do the inner work, why the inner work is becomes beautiful work in time is because that shift of being able to look inwardly and do that work actually does make us feel beautiful from within, mm -hmm. right? And so then when we look out at ourselves, we just appreciate that we're here in a form, having an experience and the look how we actually look doesn't matter as much because the good feeling and the good living is happening on the inside, right? The beautiful work is evolving us into, you know, someone who really enjoys life and embraces what we feel like we're here for. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing I was thinking about when we look in the mirror, we see ourselves in a certain way, or when we see photos of ourselves, that, you know, most often we're judging ourselves based on something, whether it's a former version of ourselves, a younger version of ourselves, or some, you know, some woman that's on the cover of a magazine. Um, and the more that we can let go of that, the better we'll be, I think. But one of the things I think I notice with a lot of women is we see other women differently than they see themselves or women see me differently than I see myself. So maybe if you, if our listeners, if you're, if you're suffering from not seeing all the vibrant, lively, beautiful things about you, ask a few trusted, you know, women in your life, what they see in you. Yes. I love that. I love that. I think it helps us again, gain a perspective, you know, the, the more objective perspective versus subjective and the subjective comes with all the biases and past thinking and woundings, you know, I mean, look, if you, you know, I, I, I know my husband wouldn't mind me sharing this, you know, when he was young, always being bullied, you know, for the size of his years and it forever was a pain until he got to the point in his life where he didn't care anymore. And, you know, like these are the healing pieces of, being able to go back and love our body no matter what, right? As we grow older, we have the ability 
to gain a perspective that we might not have been able to get when we were younger because we are older and capable of that now if we're willing to do the beautiful work. <laughs> you know, it, um, and that, that it just reminded me of, you know, even the things that other people tell us that we should or shouldn't do as we age, right? You know, I, I have been told it's probably not safe for me to walk outside in the winter anymore because I could fall. Right. When right. I laugh, like I, 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 I can fall. Yeah. Um, and, um, and also it reminded me of when my mother, she was in her early fifties and my youngest brother told her she was too old. She was a grandmother. Now she was too old to wear red and purple and red and purple were her favorite colors <laughs> <laughs> that she needed to dress differently now that she was a grandmother. And um, it was so funny because when I think about, you know, I am now older than she ever was. She died at 55. She, in her early 50s, she should have been wearing whatever the hell she wanted, right? Oh, I know, right? But again, like that's how we, you know, that's how we be also become aware of what the cultural messages are. Like what people are saying like off the cuff like that or, you know, saying what we should and shouldn't do, right? Those are how those messages get in there even unconsciously and we think really well, who says that where'd that rule come from right <laughs> like, that's right so can we encourage right now here and now encourage our um listeners to be rule breakers break <laughs> the rules <laughs> the rules yeah i just gave my um daughter a birthday card that had a picture of women that looked like they were maybe from the 1700s uh you know that that was the kind of get up that they were wearing and it says on the front there are no rules <laughs> and i feel like you know that's that's where we are now you know in a lot of ways that is where we are in the world right we're we're looking at all the rules that are there some people are clinging on to old rules some people are desperately trying to maintain them and many of us are looking at them all and going wait a minute let's just question all these rules. Let's look at all this stuff and think, what is it all about? And what is it all for? And how is it serving us now? Right? Yeah. So uh, we give permission to everybody on our podcast who's listening to look at your rule book, you know, and that's actually part of the Live Your Own Power journal. There's, there's a whole section on that, you know, of rewriting your rules, like having rules that you really can live by and embrace wholeheartedly. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, There's like so what, much there. I can make so mistakes. Much. I can make mistakes. I can make as many mistakes as I need to to learn something. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, you know, and when I think about aging gracefully or accepting aging, um, one of the things I think about really is if what I am doing is not harmful to others, if it really allows me to be who I am truly am my essential self why can't i continue to do that yeah yeah amen mm. amen sister <laughs> <laughs> i think you know the other thing that's coming up for me before we we wrap up today laurel is i'm thinking about um you know gracefully also accepting you know the limitations that come along along the way right and that not that we don't want to make an attempt at staying fit or vital or healthy and eat well and all those things. But, you know, I just think about how I can't drink the amount of caffeine I used to be able to. I know there's probably going to come a day when I might not be able to drink any, you know, and I might have to give up my tea in the morning. Um, and, and uh, you know, I can't work out at the same level I used to. I just can't, you know, I can't do it in my 30s, you know. Uh, I can't, I can't do what I did in my thirties now and that's okay, but I can still maintain the effort to, to feel as good as I can, right. In what I, in the body I have now and what, what am I willing to do to, um, to feel that, you know, to feel that experience and feel that good. Mm -hmm. And so we're not, you know, inviting everybody to just throw in the towel, you know, with the not resisting aging part, but or embracing it. But it's really just, you know, saying, you know, feeling and experiencing the the allowing, the full allowing acceptance of change as we age, that it's there. And now what are we going to do with it? You know, and what how are yeah. we 
most of this experience of of coming and going in the world as we as we are. Yeah. And and I you know going back to how do we want to feel? I mean, there things change for us. I mean, one of the things that I'm recognizing is I cannot eat the dinner at the dinner hour that my husband loves, which is after seven o'clock at night or seven thirty, eight o'clock, or the portions. And it's not because, again, the shape or size of my body, it's because I know how I feel when I continue to do that. Yeah. And it's not how I want to feel. I want to feel better or differently or lighter, right? I want to be able to sleep deeper. And I can't do that if I'm trying to digest a big dinner. So, you know, accepting those things and really letting the, the marker be, how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel today? Not how do I want to feel in 10 years? How do I want to feel today and every day? And what do I need to change in my behavior, my routine in order to feel that way? Yeah. Or it might be changing how you, you know, your thoughts. Yeah. Right. Right. I love, I love that you brought that one up, Laurel, because you and I, you know, I think we've, we've actually mentioned that on a podcast before both of us, you know, this idea of how do we, how do we acknowledge, right, how we want to feel, and then be honest about what we're doing and how it makes us feel, and then be advocates for, you know, creating the new routines or the new habits mm -hmm. will allow us to feel that way we want to feel, and do that in the context of being in relationship with others and how that might bump up against you know, how we think we're supposed to be in a relationship and to do that work because that's more beautiful work in there and definitely worth it. It is so worth it. And it's so, it's all intertwined. I don't think there's a topic that we have discussed that doesn't touch on another topic that we've discussed. I know, I know, it's so true. So, so Laurel, I want to, um, I want to mention because, you know, um, we're rolling into probably getting close to the end of our first year of podcasting, our first season. And I want to mention to our listeners that, you know, a lot of the um, podcast episodes this year have really been to us about awakening to the beautiful work. And, and the topics have really just been invitations, we think we like to, you know, send them out as invitations for people to begin to look at what is the beautiful work? What is the inner work? And how does it benefit us to engage in the beautiful work, right? So this season has been a really about hopefully awakening to all these beautiful topics that there are and these ideas and ways to begin to dig in and do some beautiful work. And, um, and we're going to be um, entering our next season pretty soon, which will be living in the beautiful work. And we'll be back and revisiting some of these topics and digging in a little more deeply and um, expanding on the ideas that we've been talking about in this first season. So we on the podcast are going to hopefully do our own growing and embracing of aging and not resisting that, right? We're never going to be in our first season of podcasting. We're going to roll into the next one and and embrace what that means, you know, and where we want to go with it and um, and how we want to expand on that and and invite our listeners to come and do more beautiful work with us. Yeah. I'd like to invite them to share with us, you know, their own experiences of, as they've listened um, to our podcast in this first in this first phase of its life, right? And um, and is there anything that they would like us to bring deeper um, in that next phase as we age and grow? Yeah, we would love to hear from all of our listeners, uh, and and we'd love to hear your stories. You know, behind some of the beautiful work here. You know, we invite you to sh share with us any stories that you want to share, any questions that you have, and um, and. We also have a Facebook group, a closed Facebook group. So if you are a Facebook user and you want to come and uh, continue the conversation of the week, which, you know, kicks off on our Monday podcast, and then um, we continue during the week and in the Facebook group. So you're welcome to let us know you want to come in and join in on that. We'd love to have you. And we'll be um, doing some beautiful work offerings in the days ahead, too. So stay tuned for that.
that, Laurel, and I will keep you posted on that. So, Laurel, any prompts or journal questions, ideas for our listeners, some challenges maybe um, on the topic of embracing aging versus resisting aging? What comes you know, I think what's coming to mind for me is um, really, you know, focusing on how you want to feel mm-hmm. as a woman living fully. What do you want to experience um, in your next phase or in your current phase, right? Bring it right to the present. Um, And then identify maybe what's holding you back. Is it someone else's story of proper behavior of a woman of your age or or a man, if we have men listeners, and I know that we do. Um, Is it someone else's story that is preventing you from embracing where you are and where you're going next in this thing called life. Yeah, that's great. That's great. What's coming up for me, Laurel, is something about, um, you know, getting in the habit, like creating a habit, maybe, maybe it's yearly, maybe it's more frequently than that monthly, a sense of, you know, taking inventory regularly about how you're growing and changing so that you're embracing the idea of you know that that's the natural uh experience of life and and hopefully beginning to break down some of the maybe natural cultural um you know uh conditioning around resisting that and the messages that we often get indirectly um and 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 instead doing your own work of you know, how did I grow and change this month? Or what have I learned this month about life? And how can I embrace that part of life no no matter where I am so that it just becomes a habit. And then later in life, you know, you already have created this kind of forward momentum around all of that. And, and hopefully it won't feel as, as it does for many of, you know, women that I work with clients, you know, I know my own plight around, you know, uh, struggling with, with aging and, and not wanting to wanting to feel like, I want to be happy, you know, that I am, that I'm an older woman now. (laughs) You know, I think that our birthday, our birthdays individually is a, it's a perfect time to do that, to really, you know, celebrate all the learning and growing and experiencing and feeling that you have felt in the last year. I mean, I am a woman who celebrates my birthday in deep reflection and, I'm going to say joyful anticipation of what's coming next. My birthday is a day that I celebrate every year. And I know that we have, I know I have friends and there are women that don't even want to talk about their birthdays, but I think that self-reflection and, and really, you know, taking inventory of all that you are in the last year and all you've become is a really good, it's a really good day to do that. I love that. And I wholeheartedly endorse that. I feel like that's been a part of my, my experience for many years, you know, my experience of really, really embracing my birthday became with, you know, uh, uh, it's less about gifts and now more about self reflection, and really owning, you know, what the last year was about releasing, you know, whatever needed to be released and really inviting in, like you say, you know, the Mm -hmm. next the next chapter, the next year ahead. And, and the energy is so ripe too. I love that birthday time because if anybody has ever, we talked about this in our new year's podcast, you know, sometimes it's your birthday when it's, that's the ideal time for you to set your goals, do your business work, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing, right? Like you have the natural energy of rebirth then. So, um, so yeah, I, I second that one in a big Mm. way. I could talk about this all day, but we better wrap up. (laughs) Thank you so much Laurel, for being here. Thank you listeners for being here with us always. We appreciate every one of you and um, we'll see you next time on Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life. Looking forward to it. Bye Laurel. Bye Laurel.